Hi guys, part two, episode two. So we're gonna start off now with this channeling and we're gonna go through the different sections that I mentioned in episode one. The different sections, just pop your back a bit. <laughs> the different sections that James Herriot wants to talk to us about. And the first one is dog and cat cafes, okay? And grooming parlours. So I'm going to take it. I did mention in episode one that you'll see me looking down a lot just because I don't want to not do these bits that he wants to talk about. So dog and cafe pal, dog and cafe, dog and cat cafes. We have them in the UK. Um, I don't know if they have them abroad where many of my subscribers are. Let me know in the comments if they do. Are basically cafes where I know the cat cafes have got cats in you can go in and have a cup of tea and there's cats all about you I know people can take their cats in the dog cafes are quite similar where you can take your dogs in you can have dog parties you can have dog cappuccino got dog cappuccinos and um etc 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 and he's got some concerns about that so obviously James Harry is a vet and we're going to talk to him about that so, he's saying they're a definite no-no, definite no-no. He's already spoken to me about this and he's actually saying to me, go on Claire, because he's already spoken to me about it in the run-up when I've been doing notes. Um, dogs and cats, he meant, dogs and cats firstly, he says are meant to be either outside or in the home. This is something to do with the immune system. I'm talking to a vet, I'm not a vet, so this is way over my head. <laughs> it's something to do with the immune system of especially dogs and also the energetic system that they are meant to be outdoors or in their own home. They're very sensitive to different bacterias and viruses, doggy bacterias and doggy and animal viruses. These, this new way of taking your cat, taking your dog to a pooch cafe, a cat, a kitty cafe, is a definite no-no because of all the different dogs that have gone through there, all the different cats that have gone through there, all the different foot for the different humans. The food, he said it's an unnatural habitat for an animal and it's a concern to him, he said, because it's going to cause us to have a kickback. He said, it's very much like with humans. He said, if what are the chances of you catching the common cold out in the woods, out in the fields, out on the beach? Nil. For us humans, nil. What are the chances of us catching a virus when we go to a cafe, a pub, a nightclub? And it's, the, and it's the same with animals and he's saying animals are meant to be anim he's so passionate about animals animals are meant to be animals he said and that's what we love about them they're not humans they're not babies they're not children so i've taken my phone off they're not children they're not they're not adults they're they're animals and he says we're trying to take them away from being animals the beauty of a four-legged friend or a two-legged friend in the, in, the, in the essence of a bird or a fish or a swimmer. <laughs> we must as humans stop exploiting animals and our pets because for although it looks like, oh yeah, we're gonna have a, I've seen this on Facebook where people take the, the dogs to these places and they give them birthday parties. He says, that's not, dogs are meant to be dogs, cats are meant to be cats, their whole essence, their beauty, their soul, their energy field, their whole makeup is something that humans can never wish to have. We can never wish to have the purity of an animal. And yet we are trying to force them to be a human. Um, dressing them up in little jumpers and dressing them up with little bows. And it used to be quite cute when you'd see a little old lady, put, you show me a little old lady pushing a dog with a bow in. And he said, but it's gone beyond that now. It's gone beyond that. And... It's affecting the energy field, it's affecting the physical body. And he says there will be a kickback from that in some respect. There'll be new viruses for animals, for dogs and cats specifically. Um, some of these are, are, could be quite detrimental to their well-being. Um, 
it's almost as though we as humans need to go back to bare basics with animals and, and learn to and relearn that these are animals. He said, I just love the energy of this man. He says, rather than us taking the animal into our cafes and pubs, and it's really interesting because when I actually got, before I went to the, the James Herriot Museum, I was actually, we were actually staying in a hotel that was for dogs as well. And at first it was like, oh, that's a good idea, isn't it? And then as I watched it, I got more and more concerned and more and more cringe about it. Not because I didn't like the dogs, but because, again, what, what James is saying, it's almost as though, let's stop taking the dogs into the human places and placing them in the human places. Let's start taking us into their zone. Let's start going into the fields, the beaches, the woods, the fields, the, the, the reservoir, the, the outside. It's almost as though humans, he's saying, have lost the ability to go out into the great outdoors. We want we want them to come back inside. He said, this isn't about their own home, neither. Because actually, again, dog owners might understand this and cat owners. He's saying about the, there's something about animals and germs that he's trying to explain to me. There's something very, he said, it's not, it's not dissimilar to us. If I'm in this house a lot. So if you take me to somebody else's house, that's going to be a shock to my zutta, to my energy, to my to my um, immunity, okay? Because my my body is used to all the bacteria in this house. My bacteria, Gary's bacteria, anybody else that comes in. Go put me in somebody else's house, my body goes a bit... Oh, even though I may not realise it, and it's the same with cats and dogs and animals. They get used to their energy field. They get used to their, their, their zone, their place, their pen. They get used to it. Um, he's almost he's also showing me the fact that some of these are going to get closed down he's saying the cost of living crisis will close a lot of these down and he's actually giving a little when I say a smirk I don't mean a sneering smirk it's as though it needs to go it needs to go he's also saying as well about animals need animal food again it's like saying it's like saying to a human you know I, I was, where was it I, oh, it was my it was uh, my brother <laughs> went and got his dog a cappuccino a doggy doggy chino or something from starbucks and it's like you know they're not meant to have that it's he's it, it's actually saying it's the equivalent giving dogs unless it's some meat off your sunday dinner plate giving dogs human cap puppuccinos and all this kind of stuff doggy cakes or it's actually the equivalent to somebody giving us dog food it's actually quite insulting to the doggy saying energetically and their bodies can't digest it i'm not a vet so i'm just talking about what he's telling me their bodies can't digest it and it's making them quite sick um there's certain things in our food that resonates with us and there's certain things in their food that resonates with them okay he knows his stuff he knows his stuff but he's not He's not got an ego with it. Um, grooming parlours. This was funny. When I made the note about grooming parlours, I actually went to the front. I mean, you know, I've got a bungalow, so I'm at the back in my office and I go to the front in the living room. <laughs> As he'd finished talking about grooming parlours, there was a grooming parlour in the street and I was like, ooh. Um, he has concerns over that as well because of the chemicals that are used in some of them. He says, not all of them. He said, but some of them are using quite harsh chemicals. He's also showing me one that used to be where I used to live in Leeds, where you used to take them in yourself. And he's like, there was like a bar of, like a bar, um, where there's all different chemicals in all different washes and stuff. And you went and you took your dog and your cat, I think, and then you washed them yourself. He said, you don't know what, how much to use. It's like, it's as though, you know, when you get, say that's a, a, um, a tube of shampoo, people are like that. And rubbing it in and it's it's too much people that look after animals and wash animals know about the different things to wash them with and actually again he's saying it just needs to be kept natural as natural as possible with washing animals because they have reactions to chemicals just like us and they're struggling with the awakening at the minute so as natural as possible and again he's saying taking them into the grooming parlor it's just a no-go. He says, yeah, take them to the vet. This isn't about making vets money. This is about respecting that they are an animal. They're not like us that want to go get their nails done and go get a facial. That's what we do, we're humans. We love that kind of thing. But animals aren't meant to do it. And he's saying it's, it can cause animals a lot of distress. 
he said again vets are taught how to do things and say things and approach animals in certain ways he said you know i, I mean i i could set up a grooming parlor for dogs i've got no idea how to talk to dogs how to do this with dogs um they need to be in their own in their own zone and, and loved for who they are and what they are should we have a card for that really passionate about animal care animal welfare oops Oop. sorry cards are off again they're off oh that's interesting this one sprung out and it's the night of storms and it's the horse have you seen how the horse is running away but it's about to go down a, like a rabbit hole or some type of a, a drop in the in the earth we're, we're going to trip ourselves up we're going to trip ourselves up with that. Yes, look at that. The, the Three of Swords heartbreak. Puppy cafes, kitty cafes, grooming parlours, treating animals like they're little humans. We're going to treat trip ourselves up and we're going to break our hearts. And he says owners are going to break their hearts because they're technically going to kill the pets. He says I was quite a forthright vet when I was, when he was a vet, as, as an alive vet. Um, and it feels a lot of people could have got quiet because he was quite passionate. He said many people now would struggle with the way he worked back then because he's from a different generation. And he said he's from these, he's actually saying I was from the right generation with, and as far as animal care was concerned. When he's talking about generation, he's talking about frequency. He feels very shamanic. He feels as though he's had hundreds of lifetimes with and around animals. And... This is someone that really knows their stuff. This is someone, I almost want to call him the animal whisperer. Um, he said he was like as a child, just animals, 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 animals. For all the way he loved his family and he loved people. He, animals was where he was at, just animals, all the time, animals. He said he actually preferred to be with animals and work. I, I saw in the museum that, I don't even think he had a day off, um, rather than, he also struggled to sit still and I wonder if that's why I'm getting this kind of nervous energy where I just want to be, he just wants to be working, he can't sit still, he wants to be out there working. He said I knew I, for although he had a long life, he said he knew that he did, I don't even think it was that, I think it was in his 70s actually, it was not that much of a long life, but he knew he only had a certain amount of time to give to animals with his soul contract and he knew that every minute it needed to be done with his work and in that lifetime he said he he's saying that his family struggled with that a lot and um, rightly so the husband not being there the father not being there but that was his soul calling and it never caused any serious problems with the family but sometimes on christmas day and birthdays and wedding days and honeymoons i mean honeymoon he was off working as well um there was that feeling when you got back that but at the higher level they knew that needed to go out and do this work so instead of taking your cat and your dog out to a pooch parlor or a cafe or a kitty cafe is you take them out and this isn't about actually going for a walk and stopping off for a pub meal or going off and going to a cafe that's not saying that he's saying there's something with these areas where there's all lots of cats and dogs Take it back into human beings where you've got a nightclub full of humans, viruses, bacteria, transmute really quickly. So, modern day vets. He's got concerns over modern day veterinary. Um, modern day vets. What do you want to say about modern day vets? He's shaking his head. And he's just... I don't know if he did that in his life. You know what? Um... Straighten her up. <laughs> uh, modern day vets, he's concerned. He said it's money, 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 money. It's not all vets, not all vets, he says, but money, money, money. He says they're putting the prices up and they're banging the prices up. He said the difference between when he had his practice and when he started his work, it was it, it was all about the animal care. And he said we worked in the most scruffiest practices. If we worked, we worked in the most downtrodden practices, we had the the the, the rickety, most rickety equipment. We 
we didn't have all the few fangled everything they have now he says but we had good animal care we had good animal care we may have had to tape some equipment up and we may have had to have bags that were loose and bags that had handles loose and but it was the best animal care for then and he's saying now it's all about the logo the sleek veterinary practice it's all about employing lots of staff it's all about these this electrical this um what's it called software thing with which is rightly so about you know but it's taking them away from actually caring for animals um he's saying vets used to be with a dog from a like he's using an example of a dog say from a dog as a puppy until the day it died he said now they're in an accident like, well you've got the dentist now you could see any dentist any doctor it's just it's happened with actually human health care where you used to have your doctor that would be with you from the cradle to the grave and now you don't the family doctor used to be the family doctor now it's not or well, the family vet used to be the family vet and he's talking he's showing me veterinary practices and they're similar to doctor practices where vets can come and go quite quickly once they've qualified it's a bit like doctors and dentists where what was it called oh god what was it called when i was a dental nurse i used to be a dental nurse forgotten oh that's 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 got me hasn't it because was it called? They used to have to, I think it was two years where they'd go and work in a practice, but they weren't. It was they'd qualify it, and it's about dentists. They'd go working at. Oh, I can't remember. See, I've had a lot of it wiped. <laughs> One of the first things I asked my guys to do was wipe that shit out of my head, and they did. Um, so I struggle now with memories. Um, what was it called? I don't know. Well, I nearly had it then. It'll come back. But anyway, and he says it's just a turnaround, just a constant turnaround. He's got concerns over the training of vets as well. Um, he said he just wishes he could come back and be and be a teacher. He gets quite frustrated. He's showing me him in veterinary universities and he's pacing the corridors and it's like they're not getting it. They're not. He's all about holistic um, and even more so since he's gone to the other dimensions and they're just it's all about ego. I'm a vet you know I'm a doctor you know I'm a dentist I'm, I'm this can this can be any profession as well but it's almost like it's all about the ego and the pay packet and it's not about actually caring he said actually if you actually looked at the amount of vets that truly and he's not talking about what he did sacrifice home life for it he's saying if you actually looked at the vets that actually truly cared for animals, it's quite shocking. And I've got to say, I feel the same for... Don't be controversial, Claire. Don't say it. I feel the same for our health service. I will say it. Um, not all not all people, but when I worked, that's what I witnessed. I used to work on the wards as well as in my early days to get some extra money when I was training. And I remember going on to wards and, yeah yeah it was all about it was all about the title and anyway just move on because you'll get your slapped modern day vets what else should to say about modern day vets he says but there is a new wave coming of children a new wave he says there's also holistic care coming for animals let me know in the comments because i know a lot of people really wanted these videos and are really into their animals but he's actually showing me holistic practices you know like we go to um well come back here to me for natural healing homeopathy reiki shamanic healing he's saying there's going to be the same for animals where maybe vets have gone off and trained to be vets but then actually start to retrain to do their reiki and the healing and rather than actually doing it for humans they go do it for animals who are like that uh, he's actually given me the nudge to make a little piece on my website for animals where I do distance Reiki for animals um, because he says anyone that has the power of Reiki and he's specifically talking about Reiki he's passionate about Reiki in the afterlife should make some space for giving it to animals he says it doesn't have to be for free because it takes time up but for Reiki for pets, for farm animals, and it can be done distantly. So that's something when I redo the website this year, I'm going to start doing animal Reiki, pet Reiki. I mean, I'd still do it now, but there's no section for it. So you'd have to go, Claire, would you give Reiki to my dog? And then I'd have to charge you human prices. But I'm going to do a proper section on my website. I'll ask him to channel through me for that as well. 
but yes so there's going to be holistic practices for vet for for people that have been vets or yeah is, is that started already um also people that are trained vets that may be work in a veterinary is starting to i know i used to I, I was trained with a with a girl that did oh what's it called with the with the horseshoes but she did it and she did it and she was reiki trained and her business was all about being her reiki she'd come and do that with the horseshoes and she'd do it with the reiki she'd reiki them at the same time um I almost think it was about cleaning out the horseshoes, something like that. Anyway, replacing the horse. What's it called? What's it called? Anyway, stop getting distracted. Hmm. Interesting. That's interesting, isn't it? You see, the time flies with James Herriot. We're nearly coming to the end. So modern day vets, so we're going to start seeing more of that. Also as well, he wants to draw our attention and I need to be careful with this. Medic, um, some of the medicines and stuff for animals he's putting a question mark around them and some of the that they have to have as well he's putting a question mark around that he's got concerns about that as well he says it's going to he says it's going to fight it's it's almost gone from a period like when he did it when they didn't have a lot of these stuff yeah I'm gonna go, i've got to go encrypt because i'm on youtube talking cryptic and it's almost gone the other way now. And he says, that's a big issue. He said, it's like us, when you go to the doctor, rather than the doctor finding out why you're depressed, why you've got IBS, why you've got anxiety, it's almost like, God, you missed. And he said, it's the same with veterinary. They're not finding out why the animals are reacting like they are. And especially with the awakening, they're not finding out why an animal is poorly. He said, we always had to find out why they were poorly. We couldn't just go through and, and write it because we didn't have it. He said, all of this writing down, yeah, get what I'm saying, um, scripts and stuff, it's become, it's making it all too easy. There you go, sir. A thousand pounds, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so yes, yeah. so we've spoken about modern day vets. Um, anyone wanting to do it, do it though. Don't be put off by what you're seeing. Because there's a lot of people that are into animals are put off by that, but we need you, we need you. Um, and all to those that are trying their best, he thanks them. He also does help vets. He does help vets and he does help the colleges and he tries to appear and he does try to channel through them. Um, as do many other people, as do many other people that he worked with. You're never alone. Um, he says it will come back to a more holistic way of being. Veterinary stuff and animal care is starting to change, just like human medicine is. So, see you in the next one. See you later. Bye.